Hi, my name is Subhashish. I'm the founder of OpenSpeaks. It's a project that supports uh, marginalized archivists to document endangered and indigenous and other low resource languages uh, in multimedia mediums. But before I speak about that, uh, let me ask you and myself a question. How um, different uh, marginalized communities and particularly uh, that speak different indigenous languages have been oppressed over years? When I think about these factors, one factor that comes to my mind is the use of language in uh, media and politics. Uh, in, in many places where there are official languages and these languages are used by the majority of the people, the communities that are minority there and that speak different indigenous languages as native languages are often oppressed. And they are more oppressed when they don't speak the official language with the same level of fluency like the native speakers. And uh, when people don't have access to information or access to use their language in, uh, in a particular region for official purposes, there, there is always the case of uh, inequity and, uh, and languages deeply tied to politics and media and uh, education and even environment. Um, and the access to justice as well. Uh, and uh, when we think of COVID as a pandemic and how it's affecting people, the access to critical information in different languages uh, is not available, uh, particularly for many uh, marginalized communities and many indigenous communities. And uh, when we think of those people uh, that uh, don't have access to information in their own language, how do they also contribute to the uh, uh, to the knowledge commons and they often have very low access to or very low participation in the knowledge commons. The inequity that we actually see in the knowledge commons and uh, when we think of languages, um, that, uh, that has been uh, the case for many, many languages around the world. UNESCO estimated that half of world's languages might die in a century's time. That means that majority of those languages that don't have a writing system or that are not officially recognized, that are not used in an official uh, uh, purpose, always have that challenge. And languages that have low resource also cannot afford a linguist uh, who could do research and help them create uh, uh, different tools and different resources that could be useful for the community. So how do such communities uh, make documentation of their own language and how do they create media that could be used uh, for the purpose of education, for the purpose of um, providing people with information and so on. Uh, and, and even uh, providing people with the information that is very critical, their, um, their access to rights, their access to justice, uh, their access to medical emergency, uh, environmental uh, uh, aspects that, that are affecting them every now and then. Um, how do, how do we create that? So in 2017, I started to uh, plan for language documentation and uh, particularly focusing on the indigenous and endangered languages. And later, a grant from National Geographic Society came in uh, and I couldn't find uh, educational resources that are designed for non-linguists like myself. So I started to work on a project called OpenSpeaks and OpenSpeaks um, basically is a toolkit that is designed specifically for uh, low resource language archivists that could use it and learn and then document uh, languages in audio and video mode. So, um, so uh, being a Wikipedia editor, uh, my own skill set uh, uh, helped me a lot to design this toolkit. And it's an open educational resource that has uh, very simple English text uh, and some pictures and videos and so on to understand. Uh, and then provide uh, context to uh, different uh, challenges that people might face while doing field documentations. Uh, so, so OpenSpeaks is hosted on Wikiversity. Wikiversity is a, uh, is a sister project of Wikipedia and, and OpenSpeaks is available at https colon forward slash forward slash en dot wikiversity dot org slash wiki slash OpenSpeaks. Wikiversity is a sister project of Wikipedia. And just like Wikipedia, anyone can contribute and add relevant content and expand and fix any mistakes that they find on OpenSpeaks. By design, 
OpenSpeak has a very simple structure. It has four chapters and each chapter talks about a particular aspect of documentation. The first chapter is about consent, rights, and, and content licensing. Before beginning a recording, it's important to have evidence that the person who is interviewed has given their consent. Acquiring consent is essential from an ethical and legal standpoint. Also, the larger focus is archival of a language. It would not be in the interest of the native speakers if they cannot access the documentation because of any potential ethical and legal issues. As many indigenous languages do not have a writing system, the way for acquiring consent would vary and such contexts are explained in this portion. Similarly, while publishing the recorded audio or video, one needs to know who owns the media content. So the next portion discusses copyright, moral right, and other ownership rights. Once the ownership part is clear, the next thing to decide is what license the media would be, would be published under. There are different kinds of licenses. As we're focusing on many communities with low resources, the primary focus is to ensure that any copyright restrictions do not restrict the same indigenous communities whose languages are recorded and published. So there is a detailed discussion shared here explaining how to release the content under different open licenses such as the Creative Commons licenses. This makes the content open access. This chapter is now available in the Santali language which is an indigenous language from India. This chapter was expanded with the support from Creative Commons. It was later localized by three Wikipedian friends, Ar Aswini Banjan Murmu, Phagu Baske, and Joy Sagar Murmu. They not only used concepts and vocabulary that is known to the Santali community, they also created a few new words and transliterated English words that are already used widely. The second chapter is, uh, is a bit technical. It talks about how to do documentation. So it starts from the basics of audiovisual documentation, and then it goes about how to use different hardware and software uh, to do the documentation. The third chapter is about uh, curating metadata, the preparation for publishing the recording. This includes things like when the recording was made, who made the recording, who was interviewed, what language and dialect was spoken, and what the duration of the recording is, and so on. And this information are recorded because we are creating an archive and people in the future are going to access uh, that information. So that's the third chapter. The fourth chapter is about accessibility. Accessibility is the uh, way to make any content accessible to people that have disability. So if somebody is uh, deaf, then how do, they, how do they understand what is being spoken in a video? Right? So we need to make subtitles or captions available on screen, which means that they could read the text while, uh, while watching the video uh, and they could understand what is being spoken in the video. Uh, you might have seen uh, the use of uh, subtitles in movies. Uh, so the fourth chapter is about that. As a humanity, we are challenged by climate change and uh, health emergencies such as COVID-19 pandemic and even mass displacement of people. Such unforeseen uh, events bring a much higher risk to humanity and, uh, and particularly to the indigenous and other low resource language communities. Uh, when communities are affected, uh, their languages are affected and their uh, political stability, their agency over governance also gets affected. And if communities can have access to an educational resource that is open and tools at their disposal at no cost, then at least some of them could uh, take the initiative to document their own language. And um, this documentation doesn't have to be only cultural, but also documentation of critical emergency information. A project called Viral Languages has been helping a lot of indigenous communities uh, create videos informing their own community members about the, um, the precautions that they need to take to avoid being infected with COVID-19. When the ultimate goal of this project is to document indigenous and different low resource languages, I would invite you to translate open space into many languages, uh, particularly if you speak any indigenous and uh, other languages. Uh, and if you can, you can also encourage other people to do that. 
And uh, in many cases, the translation into official languages also help because um, there are many bilingual and multilingual indigenous speakers that could find it easier to translate from that official language. I would also love to help you make a video version if you actually speak an indigenous language yourself and uh, that has no writing system. Those of you who speak English can also help improve the current version of OpenSpeaks. Uh, we have a long way to go to ensure that everybody has equitable access to information and equitable participation in the knowledge commons. But I strongly believe that if we help each other as humans and help build community-led media, then we would be able to uh, address the entry-level barrier to knowledge equity. Thank you so much.